What If It's Cool is proudly brought to you by Respo Clothing. Feel like a champion by wearing the merch from all the stars, including Luke Resner, B Squared, Savannah Rowe, John Stop Action, Nova Nichols, The Cooters, and my personal favourite, Conflict Axiom. So feel like a champion by checking out Respo Clothing. They can be found on Facebook and on Instagram. In the mood for some wrestling? Make sure to check out the Melbourne Wrestling Show every Thursday at 10pm on Channel 31. Alpha Pro Wrestling presents Obsession, happening on Saturday, August 17th at the Pipeworks Market. Take a link's in the description. Make sure to check it out. Before you see Obsession, make sure to also check out Alpha Pro Wrestling's Energy 7, also happening at the Pipeworks Market from 12pm. Ticket entry is only $2. Make sure to check it out. Adrenaline Pro Wrestling presents Breakout 45, featuring the upcoming stars of Adrenaline Pro Wrestling, happening on August 23rd at the Adrenaline Zone. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. The next show from Brain Buster Wrestling Project will be happening on Sunday, August 25th. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's Reaction Wrestling Wednesdays and... Um I'm with my co-host as always, John L. Crossfire. Johnny, how you doing? And we are here with award-winning, championship winning and stealing, JP Hargraves, the director. How are you, bud? I ain't still nothing. I earned everything <laughs> I've, I've gone. But yes, I am good. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. That's all right. And we've got a cameo from one of your cats in the background, which is... Uh, you know, it's Harry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so distracted when the cats come, come yeah, on the screen. Yeah, he's around in the background. That's all right. Mm. Now, before we even get started, we just got to do the usual um, plug and stuff. Firstly, Johnny, how's the health? Uh, plugging along, mate. Plugging along. Plugging along. Everything it's pretty good, much everything all it is. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I've uh, been going for walks and stuff. I've cracked 50 k's in 12 days. So. Oh, that's good. Really, really good. All right. Well, the main reason why we have the director on uh, this episode is because he just released a uh, little mini doco called The yes. Wrestler. And um, at the moment, uh, there's a competition going to be voted. Uh, JP, what, what, what can you tell us about the uh, the competition so far? Um, so I've been doing um, focus on ability on and off since about 2017. Mm. Um, I entered that back then with a short narrative that was also like a biopic of myself, which I won judge's choice for. Um, and yeah, I've entered a couple of years after that. And this time around, especially now being in the wrestling industry, I thought it was best fit to try a doco, uh, just reflect on myself, hopefully connect to others. They're in the same boat, all, all about just having been on the autism spectrum and trying to get a good message out there because, yeah, I think we all know there's a huge amount of fans and even wrestlers that are on the autism spectrum. So, yeah, made this movie. It's released on the Focus on Ability website. Um, so, yeah, the voting started on the 7th, ends on the 13th. I'm pretty sure you're releasing this. The day uh, after. The, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> cool. Um but yeah, it will still be up there to view because it, they got a link with um, all the open entrant documentaries from Australia. It's it's in there. Um, as far as I know, it's going quite well. Been getting a good reception. I know I sent it to you before I release and released it and a few others just to get some feedback. And um, yeah, it seems seems to be doing what I um, planned out to do is just yeah connect to people and hopefully inspire a couple of people here and there out mm. there that might be doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, when you sent it to me, I was like, I, I was truly honored. I was like, Oh my God, I'll get, it's a, it's an exclusive. And um, unfortunately, Johnny, I, I, I didn't tell you because I thought, you know, you might get a little jealous, but now that the cat's out of the bag, um, <laughs> sorry, dude. Um, I saw it two weeks ago. I oh, was sorry, three weeks ago. So, uh, but I'm going to be watching this with fresh eyes. So I haven't watched it since because I knew we were eventually going to be doing this. And with that being said, let's get, well, in this case, let's get right into the film. Mm. 
Wesley is a place for everyone. It's a safe place for all the fans, no matter who you are, disabled or not. It's like you can just enjoy Wesley, and Wesley always so valuable. It's like a big, happy family, and valuable, and so understanding. You learn so much from Wesley and Wesley people. I think it's the most unique hey, thing it's Sally. that's ever been created, and you can't Ooh. explain it. You can't logically explain why you love it. You just know it is in here, and it's in your intuition and your heart and soul. But what is professional wrestling to me? It's escapism. It's escapism for me as a person. A person that delved into the world of film once upon a time and is now a professional wrestler. A professional wrestler that happens to have Asperger's. I'm on the autism spectrum and I've never felt more alive, more at home than as an athlete in professional wrestling. Lights, camera, action. Hi, my name is Jared Hargraves. I am 28 years old. I have been in the wrestling industry for a good three years. Before that, I spent most of my life in film. Judge's choice, best opening from the short film, Mr. Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once COVID hit, however, it took a big damp on me as a filmmaker. And during lockdown, I wanted to look into other aspirations. And one of those aspirations I always wanted to take part in was professional wrestling. In July 2020, after I turned 25, I took upon myself to partake in professional wrestling. <laughs> What kind of challenges have I faced on this journey? Diversity, I faced in insecurity, I faced sometimes forms of bullying, misinterpretation. I had a lot of people that didn't believe in me, but the same amount I've had a lot of people that have believed in me. And as amazing as it is having these people by your side pushing you to do better along this journey, people I consider family, I. I still have these other issues I still need to conquer. A big cloud of insecurity, self-doubt, self-loathing that lingers over me. I can't push them that easy. It's not an easy task to get rid of. It's also heightened by the fact that I have alcoholism and I've had that most of my adult life. All these beings people throughout the world have, especially I have found those that live on the spectrum, get attached to alcohol and also deal with issues like insecurity, self-doubt, and self-loathing. It has stopped me from conquering any dream that I've wanted to achieve. It stopped me from being happy. It stopped me in life in general. Mm -hmm. Having Asperger's and alcoholism just does not mix and... I don't know, I'm, I'm through letting that control my life. Wrestling is what I've become mm -hmm. and it's who I am. I'm only very fresh into my journey as an athlete, but and there's, there's a long way to go. But I feel I've finally made peace with myself and knowing that I've found something I'm really good at. <sighs> Again, what is professional wrestling to someone on the autism spectrum? It's family, it's friendship, it's commitment, it's it's confidence, it's, it's everything that I could use as escapism as well as something that I can gain from. Again, I've met a lot of wonderful people and a lot of people out there that I've made family and friends with. I have my life to thank you with. Ooh. Autism spectrum, any sort of disability or not, I reckon you can do anything you set your mind to, as long as you're passionate and willing to give it a go. And just being able to live out my childhood dream, I guess not a lot of people can say that, but I firmly believe that anyone can do anything they set their mind to. Mm -hmm. you just gotta love it enough. Cut! Print! That's a wrap. God, that was good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got a couple of criticisms I've got to say firstly. One, I want it longer. 
because it's like it's like it's like a little appetizer for me. I, like I want to know more yeah. about your story, but obviously, when you know me and John will have you on on our shows respectively, we won't get to delve into a little bit. But the other big one that it seemed to be a problem with this film that I that I I'm just gonna be honest with you. You know I love you when I say this, but there's no me. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been it, man. <laughs> well, in in all, in all seriousness, though, no, you you didn't even know me when you were, when you were making it. So I know, think uh, you're in the you are credited. Uh, the podcast is credited in the end credits at least. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, like the, some of the, some of the things with this um, with the stocko, like when we when we watched it uh, when Crusher was on this on on this uh, show, you know, we didn't know that you were on the spectrum. Like, you, you know, some of the, like I think Crusher met you maybe a few times. Um, I think at that point, I think I met you twice. I think uh, first one obviously was at um was at MXW, and next one would be at, at an Alpha show. And I yeah I didn't yeah. I didn't know, and I was like, wow, like, but, like is uh not not to go too much details for myself, but. Um, family member of mine uh, has been diagnosed with autism, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I I I told their parents that my friend's actually you know on the spectrum, and they should check this out. And you know, once this episode does come out, I'm actually going to tell them, you know, watch this because like this will you know make you understand that yes, like people can have this, but they can have a normal life. They can do what like like as you said, if you if they want to, or are happy to do it, they'll you know they can achieve anything, yeah. and. You know, I, I I found this very inspiring. Like, it obviously, it didn't happen this time, but when I first watched it, and I and I did tell you this off camera, I did cry a little bit because I I was I was just like, I'm so fucking proud of you, of what what you're you're achieving right now, and I know like times are hard, but I know that you will get through this. You know, and like and and I've said to you before, you know, if you ever need to reach out, please reach out to me because like, believe it or not, I've been through a lot of lot of shit in my life, and um, I'm still here. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. It's mm. nice. She's still here. Mm. John, you're quiet. No, That's I, I, the first, time you, first time on this show you've ever been quiet. No, but like, I mean, like, obviously we, 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 we make the joke like I wish it had been longer, but like I really did because like, I knew obviously it was going to be a short film. That's the whole point of you putting into the, the short film festival and that. But I thought it was going to be like, you know, 10-ish minutes. Mm. And when you shared it, I remember the day you shared like the link when it was live publicly to the MXW staff page. The moment you... Shared it. I clicked on it just because I was like, oh, I'll just save it to like my watch later. I saw that it was four minutes and 56 seconds. And I'm like, bro, that's five minutes. So I just sat there and watched it then and there while yeah. I was waiting for my wife to get back from one of her appointments. And I like, I didn't didn't quite shed a tear, but dude, the goosebumps I got the first time watching it, and even just watching it again, like I, I, I'm not on the spectrum per se. I have ADHD and I used to see a pediatrician when I was younger. And they basically explained to me like, because my brother has autism. Uh, have nephews with autism. I think actually my uncle or maybe my dad, I think my dad actually had slight autism before he, he unfortunately passed, but it, we've got multiple generations of autism. And when I was seeing this pediatrician, they basically explained to me, like, to me, he's like, has ADHD, not quite ADD, but they were like, I was like, probably like, if you do, obviously the spectrum's a very broad thing, but he explained it to me like it's the scene from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Like the wall is the autism spectrum, and he's like, I am hitting that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and even now, like, like I have like um, my sister in law with autism, and what, even my doctor, the he's left now, but my GP, my local GP, for a, the number of years that I had living here, he was autistic, and they always say to me, like, they look at me, and they're like, Are you sure you're not autistic? And I'm like, Well, my doctor's telling me that it's it's here, like I'm knocking on the door of it, so I yeah. feel I do feel a lot of it to an extent. <laughs> well, it's for not... those for those that don't know what autism is, can you just give us a rough idea what 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 you're dealing with? Uh, me personally, it's changed over the years a lot. Like, especially like, I didn't. I'd seen a G, GP and got diagnosed when I was three. I wasn't specifically aware of what it was till I was about seventeen, and after that, that's when I was like putting the thing. Putting, putting, putting everything together, trying to understand it and then reading into it more and just become more aware of things. But I, from what I can tell personally, it's um, just like how you take things in. Sometimes 
yeah, like I can overanalyze stuff. Maybe I can misunderstand stuff. Um, uh, socially, it really depends. Like I personally have to get pretty close to people these days. Mm. To, um, really feel comfortable. And like that, that, that can take a fair bit of time. Just, I don't know, things have kind of gone in reverse as I've gone older. Like when I was a teenager, I could, I didn't mind being around people. These days, I'm a bit more reserved and just do my own thing. And I'm like, I'm more, I'm more comfortable doing it that way. But if I, yeah, if I get close to people, it can, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, just social side of things as well. Um, uh, Yeah, I know. Sometimes, yeah, how how I say things, I guess maybe. Like, um, there's a few things. I'm just trying, I can't really pick them up right now. But yeah, mm. it, 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 there's there's a few things in in it that like that really make it, make it that for me mm. per se. But um. Yeah, mostly yeah, just information, understanding, and social um, stuff. Yeah, no, because um, the, the my my sort of uh, only real knowledge has actually come out, out of another wrestler. Actually, it's actually because of uh, Lockie uh, when he won the um, the autism championship in America. You know, it was like sort of my introduction to to know what it was. I I, I kind of heard that heard the um. Heard about it, but I never really understood. But he put he put this post about it years ago. I think when he when he went first won it, and I always like wondered like what it's like, what what it's um what it's like. And then now, obviously dealing with my family member who's now been diagnosed, I'm you know very engaged just to see, and I'm trying to help him as much as I can because it's um it is a it is a little bit stressful, but it's also relieving now because we we thought that there was you know something else and now that we know now we, we can now work on work on the situation and and hopefully um make make life a little bit easier for them so yeah i think yeah with my experiences especially looking at younger people it's like i'm not self-diagnosing stuff but like i can at least see the early signs stuff of it in younger people now just because mm. yeah i've really looked into it over the years um, with Lockie, um, I wanted to try to do something with him down the line with that belt because I thought that would be a cool thing. Because originally for this documentary, I wanted to kind of had a have a match in between s- segments mm. of me and him doing a match for the belt, just tell a little story there. Mm. Uh, just yeah, not we weren't able to meet up at the same time, but um, yeah, hopefully down the line that that's something I'd love to do with him. I'd love to just doesn't matter where it is. I'd love to just tell that little little story there. Well, then now that now that we all work at Alpha together, I think that's a uh, open invitation. You know, um, Alpha. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of Alpha Pro Management. I'm just saying, Alpha. You know, we've got both of them. I think it would be a great opportunity for us to do that and also showcase both these amazing, um, talented wrestlers that we have on the roster. That's for sure. Um, John, like. I'm 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 so glad that we get to do this, oh, and just... and uh, like we get to showcase like Australian talent. I I just got to put it down. I fucking love this show. I really do. And, and it's one of those things yeah. where like I'm obviously not going to say like I understand all of it because as I said I'm I, I'm borderline. Like I don't I haven't dealt, you know I have ADHD and whatever which has its own troubles, but I don't have I don't understand fully the extent to to Jared's struggles. But it's one of those things where I've met a handful of workers and I won't obviously name them publicly for, you know, their own personal well being Cause I don't mm. think they've made it known publicly, but I, I know a handful of workers personally and I've wrestled a couple of workers that have uh, different form. Obviously autism comes in many forms. I've wrestled a couple with Asperger's and I've wrestled a couple that I don't know their exact diagnosis. Cause we weren't that very, that, that we weren't that close, but with all of like the struggles and stuff, that you face in a weird way. I feel like, and this is coming from like my, my brother, obviously he's not a wrestler, but he's very good with technology and other stuff and other talents that the, the autism in some ways, from what I've noticed with a lot of the wrestlers that have autism, as much of the struggles as they face in everyday life, it's almost like 
it actually kind of helps them with the wrestling and the training and that because they're really able to, I guess, channel themselves. And I guess I kind of understand that to an extent because with my ADHD, I can hyper focus on stuff and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, I've, every wrestler I've known, and I've even had a couple say to me that they think honestly that like everything they deal with outside those doors is, is shit and it's, it's, it's a struggle and whatever. But once they're in that ring, they've actually said to me that they, they, they literally feel like because they have, a, I guess, a different way of looking at things, they're able to kind of channel it with their training. And to be, to me, I'd honestly look at the way you wrestle and how quick you did pick it up. And like, I, I think I wrestled for three and a half years before my eye gimped out in probably, you know, 75% less of the time you were 10 times better than I was or ever will be. And I feel like because of the way you look at things in some aspects for wrestling, do you feel like that's, that's actually helped you or is it, has it hindered you? Cause as I said, I've had people tell me that they, they actually think that in this case it's, it's, it's helped them. Um, I don't know from a technical aspect with my wrestling, cause I, I, I'm, I try to keep things pretty simple cause I'm very passionate about um, just character work and yes, everything like that just getting the character over and just like having fun with that but yeah just it goes back to the filmmaking stuff i used to um do is um once you find something you, you're truly passionate about you you really really just can't focus on anything else which can be good and bad i've, I've found because like yeah <laughs> i could have a different different career altogether if i focused on on all that but when i have focused on the stuff i'm i love and passionate about it's just like that's all i want to do and that's all i want to give, give my my all to and yeah when i get into the ring that's just like that's when i'm switched on that's when i'm in my character it's mm -hmm. like I've, I've been able to find that balance of just like all right i'm just myself for the time being as soon as my music hits yeah i'm ready to go mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna leave, leave this one last thing about this movie and I hope you take this this feedback, you know, very well when I say this. Grow back your hair. I fucking miss you having long hair. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm in a, ter in a terrible spot where I don't know what the hell I want to look like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see it like six different scenes. I've got like three, yeah, <laughs> so many different hairstyles throughout the thing. I know. No, because like the very first time I ever um, – like saw you was actually and god this is this is this is how bad i am when when i'm trying to remember stuff i i remember this particularly because um you followed me after i liked your photo uh, like like your video oh. um this is on tiktok with you coming down the stairs with the camera oh right yeah, and, I, and i just went holy shit someone's actually doing like a like a holly director gimmick fuck i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna love this guy right now yeah. you know and like just literally, you know, just because I, I love that I love that you you brought out the the camera like that. You had the glasses on, and and obviously I I dig the hair. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be my new, my new favorite wrestler. Um, and I, I, I'm 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 excited to see what's going to be happening with your career. Um, I'm glad that I get to call some of your matches as well. Um, yeah, you know, whether it be an alpha, an adrenaline. Um, I I, I mean, I, I I'm not on the start, but I've worked for MXW as well as behind the scenes. Um, interviewer. Can't wait. Um, don't, uh, before before we uh, finish up as well, I will say this though: one of my favorite interactions uh, doing interviews, the um, you know backstage and stuff, was with you when we did it? the um, the WrestleFest night two when uh, your partner was talking and then you know you, you just said I don't want to say anything. I'll just you know I'll just do whatever in the background. And you've gone and just gone to fix my collar and everything. I'm just like that. And literally we're just going back and forth hitting each other. And I'm just like. I fucking love this guy. Like auto automatically, just from just from that little bit, it's my favorite bit because I'm trying not to break character, and I'm looking at your eyes, you're looking at me, and I'm like, I'm, I don't want to laugh, so I just like, but and you can see it in the clip, I'm biting my lip because I don't want to do anything, but you just keep going off at me like that, and it was great. <laughs> I, think I, was, I think I was just gassed from the match, so I was like, Tom, you take over, so I just muck around in the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. As we're saying this as well, we need to take a quick moment to acknowledge our overlords, our sponsors here on Reaction Wrestling Wednesdays, Respo Clothing. Check out, make sure to check out Respo Clothing and make yourself feel like a champion by checking out all their merch from all the stars. You can find them on Facebook, Respo Clothing, and on Instagram, Respo.clothing. And um, I am proud to announce this as well, that you can now own your very own What If It's Cool t-shirt 
we will be uh, doing a uh, pre-order take um, at the start of September, and hopefully by the end of September we will have them all pre um, printed out. But speaking of merchandise, John, I know you've had them printed out. Do you want to grab one and show us it? Um, shit. <laughs> Trying to like because like they're all in a box except for the ones that I got for myself and Nova because like they've been sorted and stuff and I put them in the box and yeah hers was literally like I swear I saw it this morning but I don't see it now so oh god well I'll put it right here photo of it this is I was meant be to be wearing it in something we were meant to do obviously can't say what but that's why I don't have it because I wore it on Friday for something we were meant to film and it's now in the wash so that I can wear it for commentary this weekend. But yes, I'm um... got it. Um, so just to, for the people that, um, that have forgotten, what, what is the occasion for you having <laughs> so, a special merchandise? So, uh, obviously my, my finishing move was basically a claymore, which everyone's fucking doing now, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. I call it the radiation kick because obviously my gimmick is crossfire. My dad, it was in honor of my dad and pretty much every death in my family ever has been some different form of cancer. Mm. Uh, but this is for the Emma Butler Memorial Show, and she passed away from the same cancer as my dad. So not only is High Octane, you know, a good friend, he he was the one that put trust in me to have my debut to begin with. You know, he's been a mentor, and then for his, you know, it's a shitty connection to have, but for his partner to pass from the exact same cancer as my dad. And I say it all the time, it's not a rare cancer, but it is still one of the more uncommon ones. So I put together a little little design with a radiation kick and the, the ribbons on there as one of the eyes. And it's just, yeah, it's like, it's Crossfire merch, but uh, we're going to have them for $30. Uh, they're going to be on sale specifically uh, at the event. And then any that I have left over, I, I will then either ship to people or bring to other events. But obviously that event will get priority because any shirt that's sold on that night, $10 from every proceed will go directly to Emma's family who will be there to put towards her, uh, her her time cancer charity. In 2022, we had the memorial. We had to miss last year just due to him. He had to get a new ring made up because the one that he had was 20 years old and it was busted, but he's got a brand new ring. Mm. They, um, he's in the Central West area, but in Bathurst and I think Orange as well, I could be wrong, but there was two or three uh, doctor surgeries that now have medical equipment and just detectors and so I don't know the exact term, but to help, you know, to detect that type of cancer, uh, it was a couple of thousand dollars that were raised and yeah, multiple medical facilities in the central West area have now got new equipment because of that money that was raised. So we're That's hoping great. to continue that this time around. That was a long winded answer. I'm sorry, DPC. I'm just trying to get it all, get it all right. <laughs> It's all right, but, but yeah, the link, the link, the link for the event will be um in the description there. Now we can't have an episode of Reaction Wrestling Wednesday without talking about Disney. And shut up because I know exactly what you're going to say, John. Um, JP, what is something about Disney that you like that we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk about for a couple of seconds? Uh we all, it's a tricky one with Disney. Like we all we all would um go towards the nostalgia. Especially those older films, how they make you feel. That's glam, glamorous, spectacular. I don't know if you guys have been to Disneyland, but I, I, as soon as I went there, like, how could you not be happy being here? It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, I love that. I love all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's a spectacle. Every, it, every, every movie is like something special. Well, most of the time, anyways. I was going to say, Song of the South. Um... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for those that for those that get that reference, yeah. Um or uh oh god and John, I, I blame you for this one. Mars need mom mums. You know, I still haven't watched that properly. Like it's just been sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> it looks so bad that it's good, but I just I keep putting it off. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> but see, that just makes me want to watch it more. I know, I know. Um, so like, like, and one, one, one that people um like to shit on. I thought it was actually pretty good. Tomorrowland, I thought that was great. Again, but, didn't watch, didn't, didn't end up watching that either because it just had so many bad reviews. But again, it's one of those ones where eventually I'll watch it. I'll get a big box of popcorn. Honest just to the God, fact of reacting to it with you. <laughs> honest to God, Clooney, like, oh. you mean you mean <laughs> everyone's favorite Batman, George Clooney? Yeah, I am. Um, I, 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 I'm. I've got a massive man crush on him, so like I'll, I'll watch it regardless if it's shit oh, or not, you know. Uh, a <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, talk about bookings, uh, director. What have you got coming up that you can announce? 
Um, I just so at the moment it's just adrenaline in uh, two weeks on the twenty third. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good one. Hollywood yep. Gold back in action. Ooh, that's going to be really good. I I'm not sure if I'm calling that, but I will definitely be there as well. Uh, whether I be managing my cousin the Grow Bros or being a nuisance, I don't know, but uh, de- definitely will be there. Um, mm, it's going. It's going to be fun. Well, every every time, every time we get, it's going to be fun. Um, for me, I have Alpha this week on Saturday, so obviously Energy Seven and uh, Obsession. Um, so ticket link is all in the description there. And I besides Breakout, I'm not sure what other shows I'm doing past that. But yeah, that's that's all I got. Uh, John, yourself. So the only thing is, literally, as you were just plugging that, I just remembered where the shirt was because ADHD. But anyway, before I get to that, because yes. you cut me off, live action Stitch is perfect and adorable, and I'll fight anyone that says he looks like Ugly Sonic. Anyway, in terms Who of- Who the fuck mm, said that he looks like dude, Ugly Sonic? Dude, he looks great. When EB Games, or, or the, it was either EB or Zing, one of them posted it. Yeah. There was like a hundred com- uh, comments of people saying, change him. We need to fix him like we did Sonic. And I'm like, how dare you? Yeah, fuck you. Uh, I don't anyway. even know that existed. I'm having a look now. He, like, I, you could probably get changed a little bit, but like he's a lot better than I think we were all expecting it to be. Well, I it just like great. the fact that they got. I, I thought that I, I like the fact that they got the um the voice right. Like, yes, like, but no? uh, this is going out this Wednesday as we record this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, as I just mentioned, the reason that my shirt is not being worn and is in the watch, I'll be on commentary. For Saturday Night Smash, it's just a, it's going to be a little fun little show. All tickets, $8. Mm-hmm. It's a combination of ICW and Mass Wrestlers League. It's just kind of like, I don't want to say a house show, but one of our one of our smaller shows just to have some fun, you know, have, have, have a good night, put on some wrestling. Um, I'll be on commentary for that at the Canberra PCYC. And then obviously, as we said, the Emma Butler Memorial Show, August, uh, sorry, October 26th. Mm-hmm. We're in August, my brain. I'm working yep. Betty the Back Rower. Cleared, been announced. He's wrestling Arama, who's another guy from Suplex, who's an awesome high flyer. Actually, reminds me a lot of Doom Slayer, who we had last, last week. week. Awesome, awesome high impact wrestler. And then uh, Extreme Capital Wrestling has a hard days fight November twenty third. Yeah, all, all tickets to all three of those shows are, are on sale, and there is an ICW show. It'll be the big show in first week of December, but they haven't put tickets on on, on online just yet. But yeah. Okay. The big one for me, as I've said, is it's the one in Cowra. It's the Emma Butler Memorial Show. We are capped where we've had to move venues from previous years. We used to be in the theatre, but they've got new owners and they've renovated, so they're wanting double the price. We're in the Cowra Uniting Church. I think we're capped at once the ring's put up. If we just did a no ring wait, show. Wait, 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 wait. It's at a church? Yes, it's in a church. Oh, God, we're holy ground. I think it's, <laughs> it's going to fall down when I walk inside it, but I think we're oh, capped. Oh, shut at- up. It's it's either one twenty four or one twenty five. I think it was randomly one twenty four, but I think we're going to try and squeeze another chair in. But there's only like thirty two or thirty three tickets left, or something to that effect. So oh, that's good for a little country town. And it's all tickets for this event have been online only. That way we can control how much money you know goes to Emma's charity. Well, not we, but the promoter can control you know the percentage going to to Emma's charity. And considering it's online only, it's it's doing really well. And yeah, as, he, as he puts the matches up, and he's just announced Birdman yeah. versus Atticus Slane, <laughs> everyone's favourite Birdman. That's going to be a very interesting evening. But, yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, lastly, before we uh, round, round us off, uh, Director, where can we find you on all your socials? Uh, Instagram, I believe, is at the Director Wrestling. Uh, my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, is the director PW. I got a TikTok if that means anything. I think yep. it's the same name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show and enable those notifications to stay up to date whenever we post anything. If you can't wait for the next video, make sure to check out Corner Conversation and What If It's Cool. They both can be found wherever you get your podcasts. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace. And make sure to buy John's merch. Yeah. Yeah.